many of you have mentioned only being able to catch catfish in the surf. So today I'm going to cover five reasons as to why that may be the case and how hopefully you can overcome those. What do we got? Uh, I'm afraid I know what this might be. Dang it. Yeah. A quick bite of catfish. Uh, yep. Oh man. Not good. We've been catching them all morning. So this guy's going in the cooler. This is just your standard hard head catfish. I don't mind if I keep this catfish, do you? You can have him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look at that, baby. <laughs> Worst part of surf fishing right here. Muddy water. Worst part of surf fishing. What's up, beach bums? Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to click that subscribe button and that bell so that you get notifications each time I post a video if you're interested in learning more about surf fishing and how to be more successful in the surf. I am currently wearing our new shirts. These are the long sleeve moisture wicking UPF shirts. This is the front. It's got Bama Beach Bum on the front on the state of Alabama. And this is the back. Be sure to check that out. Uh, we're currently doing a pre-order until August 24th. I'll put a link in the description below if you are interested in purchasing a shirt. They are $30. Check that out. We are talking five reasons today as to why you may only be catching catfish. I've had a lot of people tell me and message me and comment that all they can catch are hardheads. And sometimes that's the case. That's all you can get. They're just out there so thick. You can't keep them off your baits if you're using pompano rigs and using shrimp or fish bites. A lot of times that's what you're catching but there are some reasons there are some factors as to why that may be and we're going to cover those five and hopefully how you can overcome some of those things while you're out there on the beach so number one getting right to it number one is dirty water dirty water when you're out there in the surf and you walk out on the beach and you see that the water is extremely dirty there's a really high chance that you're going to be running into catfish. So uh, what you can do to overcome this, a lot of times you may not be able to, but when we get a west wind, especially here on the Alabama Gulf Coast, typically our water gets pretty dirty. Uh, what you can do, a couple of things. Number one, you can move. You can try to go to a different beach, find cleaner water, maybe travel further east. Sometimes that works here in our particular location, but whatever location you're in, just look for a different beach that may be cleaner water. Another thing you can do when we have really dirty water is go a different time of the day. Many times the, the tides will bring in cleaner water, especially right here on the Gulf Coast. When we have an incoming tide many times, that will help push in that cleaner Gulf water. So if you are fishing an outgoing tide leading up to a high tide or leading up to a low tide, excuse me, you may see dirtier water because that's pushing in the bay water and if, especially if we've had a lot of rain or something like that, it's gonna be pushing in that dirtier water. So if you wait until an incoming tide or just a change of tides if you're fishing dirty water, go a different time of the day, it might be a little cleaner for you and maybe can stay away from a few of those catfish. So number two reason you may only be catching catfish is that you are fishing off pattern. Off pattern. Each day we are in some type of pattern. There's a particular time of day that the fish are generally going to be biting better, and especially the fish that we are looking to catch, not the trash fish. Now, to find these patterns, that's the trick. That's the hard part. That's the difficult thing. That's what we research, and that's what we spend a lot of time fishing to find, especially people that fish every day guides people that do this professionally they are looking for some type of pattern some key things that you can look into to try to clue you in are the tides of course you've got high and low tide fishing leading up to those and on the back side of those a lot of times will clue you in on what the pattern may be you've got sunrise and sunset usually around those times the bite generally will be better so you can hug those and fish closer to those times You've got moonrise and moonset that may also play a role in when that fish activity may be higher. 
So you can use those things to your advantage to try to find when that bite may be, but it's not always an exact science. There's a lot of factors, there's a lot of things that play into when fish decide to start feeding. And generally it is tied to water movement and light conditions, water conditions, all these different things, water temperature, all these things play a huge role in when fish are gonna bite. The best way to figure it out is just go fishing. But if you're out there and you know that other people have caught fish that day or are catching fish the day before, the day after, and you're seeing this but you're going and you're not having the success that you would like, most likely if you're fishing the same way they are with the same baits and the same techniques and you're, and you're not having the same success, it could be that you're off pattern. You're just not fishing the right time of day for that particular pattern. And this, whatever pattern you're in at the time, if you do figure it out, it's going to change. <laughs> it changes pretty regularly. Storms will disrupt a pattern. Neap tides will disrupt a pattern. So whatever pattern you do discover, don't bank on it for very long. Don't get set in your ways because it only will last usually a few days and then something will disrupt that. But many times when you are off pattern, the only thing biting is catfish. Number three, and probably the most difficult to overcome, is a neat tide. Neat tide. So this is a, a four letter word in fishing. <laughs> and it, it is four letters, neat tide. We don't like neat tides around here. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a neat tide is, uh, in a nutshell, basically it's just less water movement. You know, here on the Alabama Gulf Coast, a regular day for a tidal change is going to be anywhere from you know 1.4 to 1.6 feet in depth change. Whereas on a neap tide, it may only be 0.1 or 0.2 from a high to a low tide. So there's not much water movement. And fish, for whatever reason, I'm sure there's some really scientific explanation to this. And I'm sure there's people way smarter than me that can explain this. But for whatever reason, fish tend to only really want to feed when that water's moving. So that's the most important thing. So when we're on a neap tide, that will most likely result in a very slow bite. It does not mean you can't catch fish. It doesn't mean you shouldn't go fishing, but it just means it's probably going to be a tough day, especially when you're surf fishing. If it's flat calm and we have a neap tide, it's going to be a rough go at it, I promise. If we don't have a lot of wave action to put oxygen in that water and we don't have a lot of water flow, it's going to be a tough day. But that will not stop the catfish from biting. So <laughs> it could be that you're fishing in neap tide that day or, you know, your neap tides will usually last one, two, three days depending on whatever's going on. And, I, you know, there's a lot of factors and scientific reasons it is tied to the moon phase and all that. But if you're fishing in neap tide, could be that you're only catching catfish. Ways to overcome that, this is the toughest one. Just grind it out, try to weed through those catfish, find the fish. Or a lot of times if you have located the pattern, you know, whatever pattern you we've been having for the days leading up to an eep tide, sometimes that will hold. So if you do hug that pattern and if you figure that out, sometimes you still can have more success in that time that fish may be feeding. But again, that, that neap tide will generally disrupt that pattern. So it, it just, it's gonna be a tough day. So <laughs> it's gonna be tough. This is a tough one to overcome if you're only catching catfish and fishing the neap tide. Number four reason you're only catching catfish that day in the surf is you are fishing the wrong zone. And I've talked about this the last time I was in front of a whiteboard on here we were talking about our zone awareness. I will put a link in the description and in a video card of that video if you haven't watched it already. Be sure to go back and check that out because that'll make more sense in what I'm talking about here. But you could be fishing the wrong zone. A lot of times these catfish are hanging at a particular depth just like any other fish. Now some days you get out there and they're just all over the place. I've been there, you can't get away from them. But some days if you're only catching catfish and you keep fishing the same depth, change it up. You know, put your baits in a different zone. Try to work in the opposite direction like we talk about locating pompano by using our zone awareness. Try to stay away from catfish using your zone awareness. So if you're only catching catfish, vary up your distances. If you can keep a bait out longer and get, you know, bite less 
frequently because a lot of times when you're catching just catfish, as soon as your bait hits the water, it's catfish on. If you if that's the case, put your baits in different zones when you have it have catfish staying off of your bait for a longer period of time. Concentrate in that area because the longer your bait can stay in the water and not get located by a catfish, the better chance you have of catching a fish you want to catch. So don't throw it to Cuba. A lot of times that's what a lot of people do. And if I walk by somebody and I've had a successful day on the beach and I ask them what they've been catching and they say, oh, we've only been catching catfish. Usually I can tell you where they've been throwing. They've probably been chunking their baits to Cuba. And when you throw your baits really far out, usually there's nothing out there. You're not hugging that bar. You're not using the different depths of the slope to try to locate the bite. You're just chunking it to Cuba. And many times that's going to result in catfish. And finally, number five and the easiest one to overcome if you're only catching catfish is bad bait. So if you're out there and you're using old shrimp, old squid, or squid in general, I don't really like to use squid. Some people have had success with it, but I generally don't like that. Or old sand fleas, you're probably only going to be catching catfish if you're using bad bait. Just stinky, smelly, rotten stuff that you're throwing out there. You're only probably going to catch catfish. The predator fish, they, they're, they're going to be looking for something they're more familiar with. These catfish telling you that they just they'll eat anything so don't throw bad bait out there use fish bites i talk about fish bites a lot they're a great bait they work okay so and i like shrimp flavor and sand flea flavor use fresh fish bites and you'll have way more success if you're using dead baits use fresh dead shrimp or fresh fresh frozen that's hard to say fresh frozen shrimp or use fresh sand fleas don't use frozen if you can avoid it Try to use fresh, good baits that don't stink, that aren't rotten, and you'll have better success in not catching catfish. Well, bums, I hope this helps you out back in front of the whiteboard, taking you guys to school on surf fishing. Uh, this applies to other fish as well and, and other types of fishing. If you're inshore fishing, a lot of these tips can help you there as well, but especially in the surf, these are some things that we run into. Many times surf fishing is looked upon as you can only catch catfish. It's the only thing you're going to catch if you're out there bottom fishing. And of course, I think we have all proven uh, that that's not the case. There's so many awesome fish that you can catch with your feet standing on the beach from the sand. If you just apply some things and you are trying to better yourself and better your fishing by being smart about it and using some techniques and trying to hone your craft so that you can catch incredible fish and a lot of them and not just hardhead catfish but if you are only catching catfish i do have a video i'll put a link in the description i have eaten them before and they're really not that bad they get a bad rap be sure you're careful with them because they will poke you and it will be excruciatingly painful they have some toxins on their spines and it hurts so don't let them poke you but if you want to eat them eat them fresh and honestly it's not that bad of a fish if you're just looking for fish it's not that bad guys i hope this helps you're awesome if you haven't ordered your shirt and you're interested again check it out link is in the description below but as always you stay bummy